This week, the dogs take on Georgia Sports Academy. This is the place for all your highlights. You're watching the Burt Williams Show. Coach, we played a game this week on Thursday night, kind of a spur of the moment game against mm -hmm. a uh, Georgia Prep Sports Academy. Um, kind of an unknown team, don't know a lot about them. What did you find out before the game? Well, uh, this is their second year of playing. They're a post-grad program. They also uh, attract uh, kids out of high school that did not uh, make the NCAA qualifying uh, standards, namely the test score. And it's a way, if you're really close to qualifying, that uh, you can make that NCAA um, mark and move on uh, without going to junior college. It's a one-year program versus a two. So uh, they're a startup up there and have, have done pretty well. They were, uh, I believe, four and three coming into our game. Had uh, had beaten some uh, some pretty decent teams in that post-grad. They got a little conference here in Georgia and the Carolinas. And um, we, uh, you know, had some film on them. We saw that they were athletic. They had, uh, you know, most people would be familiar with Rico Johnson, who was a Georgia signee last year. But they had several Division I signees uh, in the skill area. So we were kind of concerned with their overall team speed and some of their skill players and uh, felt like we were going to have to be very uh, conscious of shutting those guys down and not letting them make big plays on us. Well, don't go anywhere. Your first half highlights are next. You're watching The Burt Williams Show. Outside. We've got to cover the cracks and crevices. We cannot let them penetrate. Ready? Burn! Burn. We got to protect the perimeter! Woo! Let Bug House get rid of your pest nightmare. Our post connected to the arm. And your ears are connected to your brain. Your legs connected to your toes. My elbow is connected to another part of my arm. Your wrist is connected to your joint. The hands connected to the elbow. At Georgia Military College in Milledgeville, our singular objective is your success. Financial aid, fee tutoring, flexible class scheduling, and online classes are great reasons to start your college education. Apply today, gmc.cc.ga.us. It's your future. Start it with Georgia Military College. Coach going to come out starting on defense. They take right here and kind of trying to keep it away, keep us safe on that return game or short kick. Well, we, our returners have done a good job on the year, and I'm sure they saw that on uh, on film. But, you know, come out here, we had a pretty good game plan uh, coming into this. Nice job, Pat, throwing out to, I believe that was Zyreka Sletman there um, on the curl. And come back for the freeze play to Montez McGuire and uh, caught him on that. Um, Come back in here, Javon, you know, letting him do what he's done all year, run that stretch, and uh, he plants and takes a helmet on the ball and unfortunately coughs it up. And then we come back, defense comes out here creating a little pressure, good coverage downfield, come up with a huge interception to start the game and a 47-yard return. Yeah, that was a nice job by Kai Tyler right there, you know, coming out, you know, dropping underneath 
uh, number one and then coming back in underneath and getting that pick and what a great return good job blocking for the guys and you know always good to even though we didn't didn't get that first drive with score uh, defense came out and uh, put it in themselves come back out here with Rutherford gonna kick off we did a great job on the night and we get another nice high deep kick right here gonna get pretty good coverage and get a penalty tacked on it to back them up yeah, you know, guys, again, coverage-wise, uh, have been a lot stronger this year than what we showed last year. Nice job keeping them pinned. The penalty obviously helped. Defense comes out, pushes them backwards, and uh, forces a punt and gives us a short field here on offense. And the ball takes a line's bounce. But we're still going to get the ball somewhere around midfield and going to come back out here with just a beautiful play-action pass and hit the tight end over the middle. Yeah, you know, people uh, I think have kind of forgotten about the tight end a little bit in coverage, and uh, we saw a couple times where they had uh, given that play up on film, and uh, Coach Robinson dialed it up, and it worked uh, worked wonders. Got to stand there close and uh, give it to Javon again on the stretch, and he pops it in. And we're going to kick the PAT through to make it 14 to nothing. And even though we had that one hiccup on offense, Coach, you come out and you get on top very quickly. Yeah, you know, proud of the guys, the way they had their focus tonight. You know, this was uh, – Thursday night game during the school year. It's a little bit of a different uh, mindset getting ready for this after a full day of class and their cadet activities and, and duties, responsibilities, and all that. So uh, those are always a challenge. But these, uh, this game, where guys came out, uh, you know, had their minds right, ready to go, and, uh, and did a good job executing. That was a third and long play, bringing some pressure and holding them. They come out right here and going to get a punt a punt off and uh, we're just going to let it kind of roll dead here. It touches and thank God we fall on it to get it. Yeah, you know, we've made a fair catch call and then Dante kind of laid off of it because there's a lot of people in there. And we you know, told him, hey, you make that fair catch call, you get on in there and if you run into them, you know, penalties on them. But you make sure you get in there and you catch that ball if you reasonably can. But uh, anyway, nice throw to Montez, nice run. And again, we come out here and uh, punch it in with Javon in the goal line offense. and extend the lead uh, still in the first quarter, I believe. And, you know, then we come off, you know, really wasn't a bad snap there. Um, uh, Alec wasn't ready to, to hold it, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, Justin really puts a good zip on that ball. That's why he's such a good long snapper. And a uh, little bit of a cool night. I think uh, Alec had cold hands. Got to get him to warm him up on the sideline before we get out there on the kick. But uh, 20 to nothing, first quarter. And guys, again, do a, do a pretty solid job there on the coverage. They come back here, catch them in another third and long. They complete it out in the flat, and here you can see some of that speed and the skill positions you talked about. Yeah, you know, and you know, we, we should have been on that uh, playing off a little bit too much right there, and that gave them more than we wanted. But nice pressure right here. I um, believe that was uh, Devontae Lambert on the sack right there. Good play by him. We come back up and, uh, you know, running the ball you know, like we've done all year. And, again, uh, we see number two running into the end zone. Uh, it's, it's become a good habit here uh, in 20, 2013. But uh, again, everything we're doing seems to be clicking. Uh, the guys up front are blocking well. Uh, you know, still first quarter, 27 to nothing, and guys uh, still have their intensity and, and are doing a good job executing. We're going to come back here and get another nice kick and bring him down short of the 20 and come back out and pick it up with them on a, uh, on a third down play, get a low snap here, and he, but he's able to gather it together and throw the incompletion. Yeah, you know, good pressure up front, you know, on the night. Really never uh, let the quarterback, or very rarely let the quarterback set the feet and throw. And, you know, that's a big reason uh, we had so much success on the defensive side. But, um, again, you can see the guys, uh, you know, working that outside edge, doing a good job, fitting up, you know, taking care of the first level, fitting up to the second level, and, uh, you know, running the power this time. And, uh, you know, punching it down here close to the goal line. Uh, Javon almost got in, and we come back out. Uh, again, goal line offense to finish the job and get his fourth score of the game. Javon does such a great job of being patient and finding the small creases and reading those downfield blocks. And the receivers have really stepped up this year and done a great job yeah. down the field. They really have. Coach Ballard has uh, been working with those guys. And, you know, we got a couple of receivers that uh, don't mind being physical, and, and that's a big part of it. Great coverage, you know, right here. You can see the guys knifing in right there. I believe that was Dante Beckham uh, making that tackle, but uh, great job there. And then, you know, we uh, ended up holding them there. We had the punt, uh, got a piece of the ball, um, you know, there, so there was no penalty on that. But uh, again, we have a short field, and, uh, you know, we're in there running. We got some of the, the second team linemen in. We still have some of the starting uh, skill guys, the um, 
uh, you know, we got the Emmanuel Bird in there at quarterback, and you know, Javon took uh, took good shot on the head right there. You see the helmet popping off, and uh, end up ball came loose as he hit the ground right there, and uh, ball the ball was turned over to uh, Georgia Prep. And we got a great catch with them on a little skinny post right here. The receiver finds a hole in the middle and takes it deep down in the dog territory. Well, that's, that's old Rico there that signed with Georgia. Made a great one-handed catch and uh, did a nice job finding the hole. Um, you know, hats off to him for making a play right there. I was, really, I was proud of Buddy Byers, our, one of our backup corners, that uh, he kind of busted coverage there, but he didn't quit the play. And he ran uh, Rico down, which uh, as fast as he's uh, – it was supposed to be. That was pretty impressive by Buddy to, to get that tackle made. But defensively, we uh, you know we, we don't uh, we don't hold them out right there and uh, give them a score there in the second quarter, and they cut the lead a little bit to uh, 34 to eight. And we come back here, and it's so nice to see Akeem Judd finally fully healthy again on the year and being able to come in and get some quality yards. You, you know Akeem's healthy when he's sticking his nose in the line. You know that's one of the things that. Uh, it has kind of hurt him a little bit. He hadn't been healthy, you know, lower body and, and elbow and all that. And uh, you can see a lot of times in the earlier games where he's really trying to press outside the box when maybe he shouldn't have. But when he's healthy and he's feeling good, you know, he's excited about hitting downhill and finding the crease like he did on that run. And it is very good to see him back, uh, you know, right at 100% now. And especially going into uh, the last few games of the season, that'll be very helpful. And before it was a great catch by McGuire right there to extend the GMC lead. Here you see the defense coming up and kind of a meeting at the quarterback right there. And you can see us constantly getting pressure on the outside. Yeah, you know, that's you know, one thing. When you get that much pressure, ball comes out soft. And, uh, you know, that's what you had right there. Um, you know, again, that, uh, that was an intercession by Tim's where Hewlett uh, did a great job right there with the poke and hope basically with the pressure in the face of the quarterback. Then you see Zarek and Sletman. For the uh, for the touchdown there as the the half's getting close to expire and uh, extending the lead, uh, kind of getting that touchdown back at 47 to eight. And Matt Rutherford really had the sweet spot working on this corner kick because he just kept pinning them right there every time. Well, one of the reasons coverage has been so good is because Brandon's been so good uh, putting the ball where we ask him to put it. Um, you know, doing it with great hang time, letting our coverage people get in there and, and make plays. I mean, we've done a good job keeping people inside the 20. Uh, a lot of times and, you know, if, if not inside the 20, very close to it. So when people have to drive 70 yards or more uh, to get a score, then you, your percentages uh, get a lot better, as pretty much everybody knows. So having the good kick coverage has been very important to our success this year. Coach, you mentioned on Thursday night how much different it is for the players to get ready. And even though we've had a few turnovers going in here, you have to be just pleased with the intensity and the focus the team's playing with. Absolutely. And it is, it's a very different day. You know, you think of college football and it's Saturday. You know, you kind of get up, you do your pregame, and everything's focused on the game. You're thinking about the game. You're getting ready. You have your time to do all that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, on a Thursday night game when college is in session, it's you, you get up, you have formation, in our case, uh, with the cadet corps. And, you have your drill and ceremony practice. We were heading into President's Weekend, so they had things to do during the day. Obviously, they had their full class day to handle, and uh, it was pretty much business as usual until 3 o'clock when we did our pregame. So uh, from a focus standpoint, it, it can be very much a challenge uh, for our guys because you, you don't get up and get your mind ready for the game. You get up and you go through all your regular business. Then at the end of the day, hey, I got a game to play tonight. And it's, a, it's a little bit of a different challenge to be ready for it. Well, GMC's up big, and we got your second half highlights next. You're watching the Burt Williams Show. Excuse me. For change. It's nice to know you can trust people. State Farm is counting on it. They want you to talk to your neighbors, then call a State Farm agent, find out how you can get discounts up to 40%. See, State Farm insures 40 million drivers. That's more than GEICO and Progressive combined. Then call State Farm agent Karen Rowell at 478-452-4502. When you get your statement from your financial representative, are you confused by all the extra fees? Grant Financial Group ends the confusion with flat rate fee-based asset management. Our team of professionals can handle all the financial needs for your business or your personal assets at significantly lower cost. We have relationships for everything from accounting to legal issues with a premium on service for you. 
Come see us today and let Grant Financial Group provide you with long-term success in your financial future. Elbows connected to the arm. And your ears are connected to your brain. Your legs connected to your toes. My elbows connected to another part of my arm. Your wrist connected to your joint. The hands connected to the elbow. start out kicking the ball away this half. We get another nice deep kick right here. Going to pin him back deep again. It, again, Brandon continuing uh, the good job he's done. And uh, again, that, that height and that hang time, uh, you know, allows us to get downfield and, uh, you know, keep their dangerous uh, return guys at bay. And like the way the defense came out ready to go, you know, hungry, playing hard, playing fast, and, uh, you know, stopping them, pushing them back from, uh, from where they returned the ball to. Dante Beckham again does a nice job, as he has all year on the punt return. We're going to come back here with Bird taking around the outside on the boot and going to get a nice gain, picking up 22 yards down to the 15. Yeah, you know, Manuel has uh, talents on both sides, uh, you know, the quarterback play, running the ball and uh, throwing the ball. And you can see right there, running the, uh, the, the book play to perfection, popping it in for the score. You know, I uh, believe he got uh, just about all the yards on that drive to go in for, uh, for the touchdown. Because you gotta love it when you go, you come out at half, you got a big lead, and both sides of the ball, you continue to stay focused and play a silent football. Absolutely, especially when we've you know rolled in you know entire second team and some threes at this point. Uh, you know in the second quarter, uh, we were almost totally uh, twos out there, um, except for we had to give some guys uh, a blow where we were a little thin. But uh, this was one uh, we we had uh, after that stop and score. We had rolled in some other guys that hadn't played much this year and we, we gave up uh, a touchdown again on a coverage bust and then let them come in and get the two point again. That, that was disappointing. Uh, Coach Manchester and Coach Hill uh, weren't very happy on the sidelines as you might imagine and uh, we had to kind of get some attention over there to make sure we finished the game uh, the, way, uh, the way we started it. We come back here giving the ball to Judd who makes a nice run taking it out across midfield. Yeah, nice job. You can see uh, Sam Baptiste out of uh, Waycross right there leading the way on the power. And, you know, here we come back, uh, we, we make a, we set the protection wrong on the, on the draw. I say protection, we, we set the draw blocking like we do uh, one of our drop back protections and we set it the wrong way and, uh, with the young guys and, and gave up uh, a, a loss on that one. But uh, great punt, great execution there, pinning them deep. And, they have a mishandle on the uh, on the snap and they end up uh, getting in there. They recover the fumble, but it ends up being a safety force. And we'll come back out here with a free kick and Pitts is going to come up here and return the ball and going to give us pretty good field position to start again. Yes, Shaquem is, uh, is a really athletic young man. Kind of came in late. Uh, he was a, a Marshall University signee and uh, he can really do some things in the return game as well. So good to give him a chance to get some. Uh, you know, Dante's carried, uh, carried that load for us most of the year, but Shaquem will uh, he'll challenge him some, I think, next year for those honors. But uh, good throw um, out of the backfield right there, and Akeem again doing a great job with the run and the score right there. Again, just love to see him getting downhill, you know, cutting, slashing, accelerating, uh, doing the things that uh, got a lot of colleges and universities out there excited about it. Now it makes it 64 to 16. We come back out here, gonna kick off again and Brandon's legs got to be getting a little weak but he still continues to get good hang time. <laughs> well we uh, you know brought uh, I believe it was after this one we brought in uh, another kicker uh, Chris Harris uh, who's actually in uh, GMC with the Coast Guard Academy prep program and uh, he is an excellent kicker. Um, he, really he came in a little bit late in the camp as well with the rest of the Coast Guard scholars but uh, He's done a nice job at times this year uh, when we've been able to get him in to get some kicks, very strong leg, and he's going to play for the Coast Guard Academy team when he gets up there and, and looking forward to, to watching him continue. But we see John Tatum there with a nice uh, nice run and doing a good job. But, um, you know, we end up stalling a little bit and uh, get Brandon out there to get a field goal. 
you know, Brandon's in the top, uh, you know, two or three in the country in kick scoring. And uh, again, we've been prolific on offense as part of that, but he is now, I think, 12 of 14 on the year for field goals. Done a really good job there when we had to get him to finish the drive with a field goal attempt. But great coverage. That was, uh, I believe that was Harris on that kick, actually. Uh, you can see him doing a, a great job as well. And then we have Jeremy Boykin coming in, actually doing a pretty good job in coverage there. The ball's thrown a little bit uh, high and away, and he makes the pick. And we bring in uh, Gary Chalute, uh, our third team quarterback, who also played a little receiver for us on the night. And uh, unfortunately, he, uh, he coughs the ball up right there. He's got to do a better job securing the ball and puts the defense back on the field. And then we're going to come back out, though, and the D makes a stand again. Boykin just in the right place at the right time. It's a great break on the football. and Then actually gets some yards on the return here. Yeah, nice job. Yeah, that was a little bit of a cherry picker. I think quarterback and the, the receiver were on different pages there. But uh, Jeremy does a nice job holding the ball in and, and getting some yards, as you say. Now, John's coming out here and, uh, you know, trying to knock the dust off of him as well, coming off that, uh, that, that severe broken foot from his high school career. He was red shirt last year, but coming in and getting some good runs and, uh, again, just moving the ball, and uh, we hold on there and uh, finish clean for a 67-16 win. And just a great effort on both sides of the ball. You held them below 200 yards, and on the ground yourself offensively had over 400 yards and six touchdowns on the ground. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we've run the ball well all year, and, and that's something that, you know, we go into each game want to control the line of scrimmage and want to take advantage of the talent we have in the backfield, but also the, the offensive line experience uh, that we have up front. And we're able to do that. Of course, you, you get ahead of somebody like we were, you really tend to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Uh, you know, I think we threw the ball about maybe 15 times, and some of that was just to get some work, you know, with those young guys, give them a chance to get in there and, and throw a few. So. Um, you know, we don't want to just sit there and, you know, air it out on somebody once we get them down there. But uh, it's also a good opportunity for our, our young line. You know, we had our whole second line played more than half the game. Uh, and then uh, we had some of our threes, had two or three other guys that are in that third group rotating in. They got a chance to get at least a quarter's worth of snaps. So it, it was a good night to get a lot of those guys that hadn't had a, a big opportunity to contribute to contribute out there on the field and show what they could do and uh, proud to see the, the effort, the intensity and the focus that they had and that's one thing I really you know, tell all of them, offense, defense, whatever, when we put you on the field you, you better be giving your best and playing like a zero, zero and they did a pretty good job of that. Well, we'll be right back to wrap things up. You've been watching the Burt Williams Show. Over the cracks and crevices, we cannot let them penetrate. Ready? Burn. Burn. We got to protect the perimeter. Woo! Let Bug House get rid of your pest nightmare. Our poop's connected to the arm, and your ears are connected to your brain. Your legs connected to your toes. connected to another part of my arm. Your wrist is connected to your joint. The hand's connected to the elbow.
Coach, you traveled to Selma, Alabama this week to play Concordia College. Uh, something a little different for us. We have played some D2 teams in the past, but not the full roster that they're able, right. able to bring. Right. Uh, you know, generally when we play a four-year school, uh, Division One in the past, or 1AA Division Two, we play their JV program. This time we'll actually be playing their varsity, which uh, I believe is the first time we've played a true four-year program since, uh, at least since football was brought back in 91. So. Um, it, it poses a pretty significant challenge in, in a lot of ways and something that's very different. The level of experience that we'll be on the field against as well as the depth and the numbers, the squad size, uh, will we, be at a bit of a disadvantage uh, in those areas. Uh, you know, I think from a skill perspective, we'll, we'll very much hold our own there. But um, it, it will be a, a different challenge and uh, something that we're trying to get our guys ready for as we look uh, look to take them uh, on on Saturday. Well, and everything that's at stake going on in this season with the season that we have going, it shouldn't be very hard to get the guys motivated to play this four-year team. They should look at it as a great challenge. Well, they do, and they're excited to get over there and do it and uh, and take it on. And, you know, we've you know been watching film, and they've seen them playing, you know, some really good uh, Division II programs and, and slugging it out with them for a while. And, you know, they have uh, – their record's under 500, but they've got a couple of, you know, wins against some good programs. So, you know, we know we got to go out there and play our best. But, um, you know, again, it's just it's a, it's a different mindset. And with where we are in the season, uh, I think it, it helps going into this game, knowing what is out there for us, if we can continue to take each step along the way. And, uh, you know, this game will just be another opportunity to show what we're capable of as a team. What is, I know you talked about them being older, and to me that would be one of the main things is just the maturity level of this team, having some four-year starters, some guys that's been together and could have a pretty good chemistry. Well, you can, and, you know, it, it, it affects scheme-wise, one. You can teach more uh, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, they're harder to fool, so to speak. You can't get them out of position uh, sometimes as easily as you might can a team that only has, you know, first- and second-year players. But you also have a much higher level of maturity uh, from a team that's handling things on the field. You know, they don't go in the jar when they get two scores down, you know, uh, sometimes like a, like a junior college team might. So, you know, it's uh, from a learning perspective as well as a maturity perspective, uh, when you have all those older guys, you know, that can make a, a very big difference how the game ebbs and flows and uh, what you can do against them uh, in offense, defense, and special teams. So, again, it's, it's a whole different uh, set of uh, challenges. I know people look at it as just a football game, but there's a lot of games uh, within the game that, uh, that people that, you know, played and coached in college know about. And uh, it'll be an interesting week, I know that. Well, and it should be some interesting highlights, too. And you can join us here next week for all your highlights. You've been watching The Burton Williams Show.